pressure is being should be felt. Collapses in refractive unit. Think uh, rays of light not will not focus on retina, right? So optical uh, optimal uh, our intraocular pressure needs to be maintained. Pressure can be anywhere between ten to twenty millimeter of mercury, right? So how it is maintained? There is production of aqueous and there is drainage of aqueous. There is a delicate balance between production of aqueous and drainage of aqueous. Right, normal range, and I to function as a refractive unit. Right. So how it is produced by the ciliary body and drainage is through. Conventional that is trabecular meshwork around seventy to eighty percent, and through UV sphere outflow that is twenty to thirty percent. Now, why it is important to know from where aqueous is drained? Because once there is any tilt in this balance, once drainage is involved, it is decreased. So there will be rise of intraocular pressure. Now more aqueous will be produced and less will be the drainage. so our management management strategies will be to will be directed towards increasing trabecular uh, trabecular meshwork drainage or uvo sphere outflow drainage we define glaucoma as chronic progressive optic neuropathy with characteristic appearance in the optic disc there will be change in the cup disc ratio right next is it is associated but not always With raised intraocular pressure, intraocular pressure may be normal. We call it as normal tension glaucoma, right? So intraocular pressure is one of the factors and not the only cause for glaucoma. So what is the pathophysiology of glaucoma? To rush through it, there is raised intraocular pressure will cause mechanical pressure on the lamina. as you all know lamina is a sieve like structures in the in the sclera uh, from where axon nerve fibre uh, uh, nerve fiber layers they are passing to the optic nerve so what happens there is mechanical pressure on the lamina it will block flow in the nerve fiber nerve fibers leading to ganglion cell death or apoptosis as you have red to red in the pathology right there is increase in the uh, ganglion cell death or apoptosis this is programmed cell death right or because of systemic factors <coughs> there is optic nerve had ischemia maybe the patient is going while sleeping there is again decreased exoplasmic flow and leading to apoptosis how we diagnose it once you do the fundus examination the obvious is you do a visual field examination will be discussed or there may or may not i repeat there may or may not be rise of intraocular pressure this is a normal disc once we do with direct ophthalmoscope the magnified view as around such a 1.5 mm right These are cup disc margins. This is a disc margin, right? This is the artery. These are the veins, and this is a cup, right? So normal cup disc ratio is around 0.3 mm. Uh, 0.3. In large cup disc ratio, once it moves to more than 0.5, especially in vertical axis, it can happen only when there is loss of because this cup is being filled with the no fiber layer right they are coming all around in particular arrangement so once there is loss of this no fiber layer uh, no fibers there will be emptying of this space so cup will start enlarging inside right there will be pallor of there is this is a neurorational ring i'll be showing later on also this is a neurorational ring So what what will happen? There is asymmetry of cup disc ratio. Normally, if one side it is point four, the other side it should be point four. But if there is a difference asymmetry, means two sides are not same 
of more than 0.25, right? There is pallor bearing of circumlinear vessels, and there is parapapillary atrophy on fundus examination. You can suspect glaucoma, right? So here, this is cup. Now it is quite big. What is the percentage of this? It's around 0.7. More than that, right? There is bearing of circumlinear vessels. There is no support behind this. There are these are lamina fibrosa, the dot, right? Thinning and pallor. So now there is inferior temporal notch. This is a new retinal end. It is same. Here it is. There is a notch. Looking at this, you can make out that there is something which is fishy. Anchor gets here. Next slide, Nisha. So there is splinter hemorrhage. This is splinter hemorrhage, right? This is a almost quite nice topic. You can see there's a lot of topic over here. Temporarily, there is nothing left. Maybe there are two fibers, resistant fibers, and they will be presented as temporal island of region, right? That is a last stage glaucoma. Again, advanced guffing. So this is the way now fiber fibers are arranged, and they are in the visual fields. Loss of nerve fibers is projected. Say if there is nothing, there is these are the fibers which are lost. Right, but they will be projected in the opposite quadrant. If it is in pure temporal field defect, will be in the severe nasal. This is the way again. There is the arrangement of fibers. So what what uh, visual fields you will see in the glaucoma? Central twenty five to ten to twenty five uh, degree uh, measure with a Zenon screen. There is bearing of blind spot. There are isolated parasitic scotomas. I'll show you next what what they are. There is sedal scotoma, arcuate, double arcuate scotoma, and then in the end there is tubular vision, right? So here, isolated parasitic scotoma. This is arcuate scotoma, double arcuate scotoma, and then tubular vision. So this is how glaucoma presents, right? Now what investigations? Would you like to do to confirm that it's glaucoma or something else? Tonometry is a uh, method by which we measure the pressure. I again repeat, it is one of the factors in glaucoma and not the only factor. <coughs> it may be normal. There are various ways to measure intraocular pressure. Slit lap examination is very important. Gonioscopy, we measure the angle. We see for it. Perimetry is we uh, document the visual fields. Then they are provocative tests, not performed much nowadays. And <clears throat> newer modalities, which are not subject dependent, not patient dependent, not doctor dependent, they are scanning laser of thermoscopy or OCT. They take less time, more accurate, reproducible, and not unlike visual feeds, they are not dependent on learning curve of the patient and the doctor. This is applanation tonometry. Goldman Applanation Tonometry, and this is Schwartz Tonometry. Those who have gone to I posting, they will see in room number four. This is the way it is being done. This is indentation tonometry. This is Applanation Tonometry. This is von Herrick test. So here, this is the corneal thickness, right? And if you measure the uh, difference between the corneal thickness and the difference between the angle and Depending on how how much is the uh, difference between the two, you can grade whether it's a narrow angle or open angle, right? This is a machine visual field analyzer by Humphrey. We have grading of angles depending on gonioscopy or depending on degree. There's different type of grading systems. 
So grade four is around 40 degree, wide open. Closure is impossible. We see solvage line, trabecular meshwork, clear spur, and ciliary body. So all four structures are visible. In grade three, you don't see ciliary body. Angle is narrow to 30 degree. Grade two, 20 degree, right? Closure is possible, but you are only seeing solvage line and trabecular meshwork. Grade one, 10 degree, very narrow, high risk of closures. Only solvage line is visible. And split angle closure is imminent. No angle structures seen. Corny and and iris are opposed or opposed to each other. Grade zero is close. No angle structure is visible. Right. This is the way. This is the ciliary body. Right. The scleral spur, trabecular meshwork, and solvage line is the peripheral termination of the desmid membrane. These are gonio pictures. How we classify? If we have to look for the etiology, we have to look for the treatment. We classify any disease. So glaucoma, they can be congenital and developmental glaucoma, right? Congenital, they are present at the birth, infantile, up to three years of age, juvenile, up to twelve years of age, right? Developmental glaucoma, they are associated with. So many anomalies like Peters, anaridia, atopia lenses, Sturge Weber, Nan Ophthalmos, Rieger syndrome. So primary adult glaucomas. Primary means where there is no other ocular pathologies there, right? There's no uveitis, no other things. They they have been classified as primary open angle glaucoma and primary angle closed glaucoma. Secondary glaucomas. There is secondary factor in the eye. Maybe swollen lens. It may be uveitis. It may be pigment release from the iris. It may be neovascularization post central retinal vein occlusion, right? It may be because of pseudo exfoliative material which is uh, covering the trabecular meshwork. It may be because of prolonged use of steroids, or it may be because of angle recession because of trauma. So secondary glaucomas, you have a definite cause in the eye in the form of all these things. Primary glaucomas, you don't have any ocular pathology. Primary congenital glaucomas they constitute around forty percent. So this rise of intraocular pressure in the intrauterine life, child child is born with ocular enlargement or boop of thalmos, boop of thalmos, right? <clears throat> Infantile glaucoma, as I said, they are around fifty to fifty five percent manifest before child's third birthday. Juvenile glaucomas around five percent, ten to thirty five years of age. So in all these, there is mal development of the angle structures. There is impediment in the aqueous drainage, and resultant rise of intraocular pressure. So in congenital glaucoma, if you are post and pediatrics, mother comes, child is unable to open the eyes. There is watering. There is uh, intolerance to light. Your first suspicion should be congenital glaucoma, right? Once you open these eyes, they are big eyes. There is thinning of the sclera. Anterior chamber is deep. They are myopic. They have bull-like eyes, right? So, in this, there is enlargement of the right eye. You can measure them. How you measure enlargement? Under general anesthesia, you can measure the corneal diameters. By calipers at birth is around 10 millimeter, right? If it is more than 13 mm, it is taken as congenital glaucoma. Is cornea is hazy because of raised intraocular pressure. Endothelium is unable to keep the cornea in dehydrated state. So, in congenital glaucoma, what could be the management? I said there is some angle anom anomaly; it has to be corrected. So, surgery is to be done. Either we can do incisional angle surgery, goniotomy, or trabeculotomy. Right, or we do the filtration surgery. Right, I will not go into the details of all these surgeries. Upper one is around goniotomy with a knife. We are slitting the angle, we are trying to remove any membranes over there. Again, trabeculotomy. We put the instrument in the trabecular meshwork and try to bring into the anterior chamber by breaking the trabecular meshwork. So, primary open open angle glaucomas they are. Adult onset, 
biological diseases family history is definitely there there is increase in the resistance of aqueous outflow at trabecular mesh due to age related changes of tissues in the tissue so now point comes how you are going to diagnose that how patient is going to present to you anybody we call the silent thief of sight why patient may present to you in the opd with no symptoms at all with advanced glaucoma we celebrate glaucoma week glaucoma day because it is very important thing patient comes to you he has a cataract you operate and everything goes well he regains the vision fine but if patient has glaucoma and he has lost vision there are irreversible visual field changes i repeat they are irreversible so once you are in the opd you don't have to take any of these symptoms lightly in my opd any patient comes with any complaint all patients do get their intraocular pressure check and fundus if possible right any doubt because i told you that all patients of glaucoma may not have raised intraocular pressure or any patient who is on steroids for any reason maybe nasal spray maybe using steroids for and i you know the most common use is spring guitar you give these medicines to the kids their parents they feel relieved you call them back they don't come back they keep on putting steroids and they may report to you after 5 6 years uh, with steroid this steroid induced glaucoma and cataract both symptoms like headache frequent change of glasses and rarely they may say scotoma as you know scotoma is of two types positive and negative positive scotoma is because of macular pathologies negative is because of disc which is because we are used to that wherever there is disc there are no retinal fibrillas but you don't see those scotomas in the visual field right that's we call them as negative scotomas we do the gonioscopy we will do the slit lamp examination we do the fundus examination in these cases so once we have diagnosed a person once we have diagnosed a person with glaucoma what is the management anybody management involves investigations treatment both they are never alone so investigations you do the intraocular pressure you do the visual fields you do the gonioscopy intraocular pressure because then in, why do intraocular pressure you can ask me a question like you said that once you say uh, intraocular pressure is not the only factor it may may be raised it may not be raised it is very important for two reasons one thing is that you can set a target pressure at target pressure is the pressure at which no further damage is going to happen right and secondly this is the only modifiable factor you cannot a person is having uh, glaucoma due to genetic reasons you cannot modify his genes right if uh, for any other, this is the only modifiable risk factor you can lower the intraocular pressure to a uh, point where no further progression occurs right so measurement of intraocular pressure is very important then secondly is we do the slit lamp gonioscopy to find out what type of glaucoma is this open angle glaucoma angle closure glaucoma accordingly we manage that management strategies are different for both so diagnose type of glaucoma set the target pressure and then we have medical treatment and then we have you can do laser trabeculoplasty or trabeculectomy which is a gold standard treatment where we start with the medical line treatment once i know person is dependent he can afford the medicines he is dependent he will come back for regular follow ups medical management is advised but if i feel that person is not dependent he cannot afford these medicines so my first line of treatment may change to the third one right laser trabeculoplasty is thing that can buy some time right the so normal tension glaucoma i said with all features of glaucoma but 
uh, opting now had changes are there, visual field changes are there, they are documented, the pressure is normal, right? So there are two things. Either you are missing something, you are measuring intraocular pressure at a time when it is normal. So you can go for diurnal measurement, you can measure at different times of the day, or it may be really uh, normal density glaucoma. It is a known entity. Ocular hypertension, you, I, we see many patients where intraocular pressure is raised for so many years, but there are no changes in the field, there are no changes in the optic nerve head. So we call it as ocular hypertension. In primary angle closure glaucoma, there is apposition angle closure glaucoma, there is shallow, shallow AC, right? And not, intraocular pressure is normal. Or you can say sometime pressure is raised. Once patient goes to watch a movie, he is sleeping, he gets up because of uh, uh, less amb ambient light, iris, uh, there is dilatation of the people and it occludes the angle, right? So primary angle closure can be occludable angle with closure. Sinechias, not in all the quadrants, but, but there is raised intraocular pressure. In primary angle closure glaucoma, there will be a total sinical angle closure and there is raised intraocular pressure with glaucomatous optic atrophy. These are stages of angle closure glaucoma, right? Here, there is similar body of the Disney aqueous. There is appositional apos angle closure. Iris is opposed. There is plateau iris. Aqueous is not going from this place, right? To the anterior chamber. And it is making things worse. So, what treatment do you suggest in this case? Yes. Very good. I'll direct me, we can do for this. When I was resident, there was a surgical I'll direct me, make a neck over here, collapse the iris, cut whole iris. Now, echoes does have to go to this place and here, it straight away goes to the right. Do the gonioscopy if you feel that uh, angle closure is less than 180 degree, you can go for laser iron dot. We have, sorry, YAG laser. You can go for laser iron dot me and Right? That was for angle closure. Once patient presents you with angle closure, there's a lot of pain. I told you previously, they might be admitted with surgery or medicine, right? They come back to you. Cornea is steamy, steamy cornea, right? Cornea is not transparent, nothing is visible. You have to Construct this pupil, uh, this uh, make the use pilocarpin to construct the pupil so that it goes, becomes flat. Normally, at a, such a high pressure, it is not possible, right? So, we use intravenous drugs like mannitol to reduce the intraocular pressure and parasympathomimetic drugs to construct the pupil. Once we are able to avert this attack. We can do laser iridotomy. So, what are predisposing factors? To see a person who's high hypermetrope, you can have this thing: smaller cornea, micro cornea, because of small cornea or hypermetropia or shallow uh, uh, small axial length. He can have shallow anterior chamber, or there is iris. Uh, iris lens diaphragm is it is placed relatively anteriorly, right? Angle closure glaucoma. I am not going to go into details. I have to show you a surgery also. There may be subacute or with repeated attacks. There is acute primary angle closure. So. Treatment, as I said, mannitol, peripheral laser adotomy, pilocarpine, and ultimately, if angle closure is more than 180 degree, 
it is trabeculectomy right so here this is the way aridectomy is going to work aridotomy or aridectomy this is aridotomy laser aridotomy not very well done it should be in the periphery it has been closed in the mid periphery <coughs> So IOP is chronic. We say chronic primary angular closure when IOP is chronically raised in eyes having angle which is great close angle closure is more than 180 degree because of repeated attacks. Drugs, I said paras parasympathomimetics like pilocarpine. It was not available. Now it's again available because of Ukraine war. You can concentrate over here. Here, here. Pilo has own side effects. We cannot use in uveitis. There is spasm of the accommodative, sweating, salivation, increased urinary frequency, sympathomimetics, drugs, and glaucoma can be selective alpha 2 agonist like brimonidine. It's neuroprotective also, being frequently used by us. It crosses the blood brain barrier causes sedation, right? Apraglonidine use can be used post yak, short acting, right? Local effects, they all have local effects. They disturb the tear film. There's local ocular allergy, drowsiness, fatigue, BP changes. So energetic antagonists like beta blockers, so very frequently used, very economical, very effective can cause bronchospasm, bradycardia, depression, cannot use in young patients. Contraindications include heart failure, COPD and asthma. Prostagen analogs, new group of drugs, they increase the uveoscleral outflow, very effective, have to be used once a day, right? But they have a lot of side effects. There is local iris pigmentation, concave keratitis, and then there is enlargement of the cilia, which is taken very good by females, right? There is periocular pigmentation. We cannot use them in aphakic patients. We cannot use them in perioperative period because they cause a lot of inflammation. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, dorsolamide, benzolamide. They reduce aqueous production, right? Again, ocular allergies, metallic taste, headache, and again, hypertensity. If persons hyper uh, hypersensitive to sulfonamide, you cannot use it. Laser trabeculoplasty, argon or diode can be used. We coagulate the trabecular meshwork, increase space for aqueous to drain out, but effect dies off with time. Surgical management is glaucoma filtering surgeries, which we'll be discussing. Then we have non-penetrating filtering surgeries. That is beyond the scope of this class. We'll not be discussing that. And what happens in trabeculectomy? There's creation of lambda scleral flap. There is subscleral sclerostomy inside the slim shims canal along part of the sclera. Now we create another drainage channel, right? So drainage is from here. We do a uh, this aridectomy also. This is subscleral sclerostomy. From here, it goes to the subconjectival space, make a blood and is drained. Normally, what happens is that from trabecular meshwork, it goes to the episcleral vein, right? So these are the steps. So I will be showing you live surgery, this recorded surgery. It's not live, it's a recorded surgery. So this is a patient with trap. I am going to apply. Fraction suture at 12 o'clock position. Fraction suture is applied. Flow is pulled down. Right? I am going to make a flap. Right? I, I placed mitomycin soap sponges over here, another over here, right? 
make sure that this does not touch the margin. So one, I will keep the mitomachine sponges over there. And now I'm doing a very light cautery, bipolar cautery, two poles bipolar cautery, right? My next step will be, I have created a partial thickness incision. This is the incision. And again using bipolar cautery. Stop the bleeding because this bleeding is going to bother me later on. So I have created a partial thickness. I have made a scratch in the sphere. Now I will be dissect dissecting this, right? This is the crescent knife. We show you in the exam. We ask you in the exam also. Made a flap, right? Now where meat. White meets the blue, right? You can see I remove the sponges one, two, three, and four, right? Copious irrigation. You can see the area where I need to make a sub sclerosis sclerosis. I have to take this part also, like this, right? Since these eyes, they are chronically inflamed because of anti glaucoma medicine being used by them. I'm using MVR knife, right? Sub sclerosmi. I'm going to cut whole of the part of the sclera and part of the vessel over here. Over here. This is going to be like this. This step is very important. Once I cut this, iris is going to come out, and I have to do trevic like uh, this iridectomy over there. To change, I'm going to take a tooth forceps. The tooth forceps, colibris forceps. I'm going to cut this part of the sclera, right? Sclera is cut. Two fibers of sclera are still there. I'm going to cut them. Yeah. Once I complete this process, iris should come out. So it means I have not done it now. Iris has started coming out. Right? You can see. I have done the iridectomy also. Yeah, this is iridectomy being done. I will remove the traction suture. You can see this is iridectomy. You can see something over here. Underneath the cornea, there's a black spot. You can appreciate it fine. I'm 
giving sutures to the sclera 1 2 then conjunctiva continuous sutures in the conjunctiva sutured the conjunctiva put the made the anterior chamber with uh, with uh, air this is my aridectomy if you can appreciate this right completed my continuous sutures in the conjunctiva so now you see what was depicted in the diagrams over here first i made it clean like this did it like this and then sutured it like this so now another site of drainage has been created now this aqueous has this that will bypass the trabecular meshwork go to the subconjunctival space and can be absorbed advantage is what is the difference between medical management and surgical management cost is one time right secondly there is peak effect of a drug then it veins off it is like this but with surgery effect is if you are successful effect is same if you are maintaining a pressure of 7 it will be 7 all the time it will not increase it will not decrease right so surgical management is always better for patients who are dependable reliable and can afford the medicines for medical management but surgical management if you feel otherwise if you feel the patient is not dependent not reliable cannot afford the medicines or he is already on maximal medical therapy and cannot uh, be allowed to continue at this pressure we still we have to decrease the intraocular pressure that is the requirement now what questions i am not saying any questions what questions no i want uh, next 2 3 minutes i want the questions from your side which i can answer yes arif everything very clear you can ask questions so patient uh, yes yes very good question we gave a block very well good block was given if patient is not anesthetized you will not allow me to operate on all My question is that is it local anesthesia? Local, local anesthesia. We give a local block. So most of the eye surgeries are local. Reason being uh, that we have an elderly population. If we have to work them for general anesthesia, it's going to take a lot of resources from uh, our end. And secondly, general anesthesia has its own complications. One, we can do things simply by uh, doing it under local anesthesia. Why to go for general anesthesia? Ninety-nine percent of my surgeries are being done on local anesthesia. So, sometimes if I am operating an elderly patient with comorbidities or uh, some other problems, the anesthetist is there to assist us as and when required. But otherwise, even uh, probing, I am carrying out under local anesthesia. With experience, you can do many, most of your surgeries under local anesthesia, except for strabismus, because there is lot of handling of uh, muscles so that i prefer under uh, general anesthesia why is oculocardic reflex once i start handling muscles so patient starts going to tachycardia bradycardia so that is the time when i prefer an general anesthesia otherwise most of time we are doing uh, our surgeries at local anesthesia So I've given you an overview of glaucoma. Go home, read it. If you have any difficulties, we can uh, discuss on uh, Monday. And uh, Monday is Dr. Hansraj's class, which I am taking. He's on vacation, on leave. And Thursday is my own class. Otherwise, also you can come in the OPTs. We can discuss it. Thank you. I think we had a long class today for around uh, one and a half hour. That that was our main.
who said that classes should be 45 minutes only when i feel that like that and you thank you very much <laughs>